Hey Volta, how much does a pirate pay for in, pay pay for corn? Fifty dollars. A buccaneer. I don't get it. Pirates, a buccaneer. A buccaneer is a pi another word for pirate. A buck. A buck, like a dollar. Yeah. A buck is a dollar. Uh -huh. And an ear of corn is an oh, ear of a corn. Buccaneer. A buccaneer. Okay. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> did you know? Did you know that a, a joke is like a frog? If you dissect it, you kill it. Yeah, I heard that one before. Yes, that's what just happened. Okay. Yeah. Hi, uh, sweet friends. Sweet friends. <laughs> Welcome to our show, Watercolor Happy Hour. Today's cocktail is a corn margarita, hence why Dan started with a corn joke that I did not get. <laughs> so you got any other jokes that are... Uh... What do you get when a truck runs over an ear of corn? Tired trucks. Creamed corn. Huh. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. What is I... the most mythical okay. vegetable? Corn. A unicorn. Uh, uh, uh. All right, Dan, why don't you show us how to make the cocktail? Oh, <laughs> uh, I thought we were just here for jokes. No. I got the jokes. <laughs> See, Pat appreciates my humor. Hi, Pat. Welcome to our show. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So as we said, it's corn theme. This is also part of a tequila day that's coming up in whenever... Tequila, National Tequila Day is July 24th. July 24th is National Tequila Day. Every day is like some liquor day. It is. How is everybody not drunk all the time? I don't know. I don't know. What a world. It would be great to live in it. Uh, but, so this is a corn margarita uh, inspired by not only Tequila Day, but also Volta's love for corn and one of my new obsessions, uh, this corn liqueur called Nixta. Uh, yeah, the bottle is just amazingly kitschy. Another one of those that most people would probably walk right by if they saw it on a shelf. I don't think but, it's kitschy. I think it's really cool. It looks like corn. No, no. I mean, it's it's that's why I mean amazingly yeah. kitschy. It's something that, uh, that I like. Yeah. It's fun, but you probably would be like, oh, wow, that thing looks like an ear of corn. I don't know yeah. if I want to buy it or not. Yeah. Uh, it's great. It's sweet just a little smoky but not too much uh like tiny just enough to accent it but also like vanilla and just just tasty uh there's a whole story behind this if you want to look it up uh it's liqueur de elote uh, they do a nixtamalization of the corn which is what they used to do back in like the mesoamerican aztec times uh where they would soak the really thick cold like what we would now call heirloom corn in uh, an alkali solution like lime water. And that'll help break down the proteins that are on the outside and allow us to digest it better. But it also makes the corn taste a little sweeter. Mm -hmm. uh, and it helps with uh, the fermentation process, which is how we get liqueur de elote, as well as I think this company makes another, uh, uh, yeah, Aboloso. Yeah, mm -hmm. Aboloso. It's not tequila, but it's a corn liqueur, mm -hmm. not or corn liquor, which is different than what we would call like mellow corn or any of our corn liquors in the States. This is a much more refined version of it. But also on to the drink. This one, we're making kind of a, I don't know, a lote in a, yeah, in a glass. Yeah, it's like a margarita. Yeah. A corn margarita. A corn margarita because we actually add corn. You wouldn't think corn in a drink would be good, but this yeah, is it tastes so freaking good. Freaking good. So we're just gonna dump into our shaker. We're just gonna dump about I don't know tablespoon, two tablespoons of corn kernels, uh, cooked, because yeah. we want to be able to smash them up. And we actually use frozen ones. Yeah, we, we didn't have fresh. microwave them. <laughs> so. Tastes just as good. Yeah. Yeah, that was supposed to be our secret. Oh no! I wanted to. I wanted to tell people that if they don't have fresh corn, they could still make it. Ah, yeah, you're right. Okay, then we're gonna take uh, a good bit of lime juice in here because we want a lot of liquid. So I'm gonna take probably a full ounce. I'll get what I can get out of that guy that was just laying around. 
Let's get out of there. We're going to take this other one that we have for decoration, but also for cocktails. Slice a wheel for our garnish that's going to come later. I think you put a lime wheel on the garnish, didn't you? Or did you just uh, put a sprig? I did. I, I put a, um, not a wheel, but like a slice of A of, slice of lime. Okay. Of lime. Yes. Um, so we're just uh, let's see. Uh, Nabila says she's seen corn ice cream on Pinterest. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, bet I, I bet that would be really good. I love yes. corn. <laughs> Oh, hi, corn, LinkedIn user. Corn in all forms. Hi, LinkedIn user. <laughs> I'm sorry it doesn't it doesn't tell me who you are, but thank you so much for joining our show. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we're doing a full ounce of lime juice, and we are going to take a good chunk of cilantro. Optional for those of you cilantro haters, of course. <laughs> we're just going to kind of roughly tear it up, uh, stems and all because we want to get all the flavor. Mm. Just make sure it's washed like that. And go ahead and do a little bit of our next step. I'm doing about uh, a half an ounce. I'm going to add a little bit more after I'm done muddling. I just want to get some liquid in there to absorb all the corn juices while I'm squishing it up but I don't want so much liquid that the corn is uh, just moving around and not getting underneath my muddler. And because we want that corn to be really just kind of juiced up, we're doing a little twist at the bottom to help grind, grind the corn. It works better if you have a, a muddler with a rough bottom like this. If you don't, no big deal, just smash it some more. You're just looking for something a little chunkier than cream corn. Yep, so we have a nice little slurry in there. I'm gonna add a little bit more of my nixta because this is gonna be this is gonna act as a sweetener. But it's not completely sweet, so we're gonna do about a bar spoon. That's uh, five mLs. Maybe a little more of uh, honey syrup. Uh, honey syrup, if you Recall is two parts honey to one part water, uh, warmed up in a microwave or something like that, and then cooled to room temperature. Uh, you do that just because it dissolves in liquid a lot easier. Otherwise, you just end up with this chunk of honey mm. in your drink, which you know is tasty, but doesn't yeah. really make a cocktail. Mm -hmm. And then finally, it wouldn't be a margarita without tequila. It's tequila day. Yeah. So two ounces of tequila. It sounds strong, but there's a lot of other stuff going on in here. So it will definitely stand up. Nice. To two ounces. We're going to take our ice. Ice in here. Actually, going to add that to our glass first I will take some of the lime wedge on the outside and we're just gonna get ourselves a half salt rim fill up our glass with ice take the rest of that ice Get it in our shaker. There we go. Ah, it's so nice having a counter. <laughs> you don't have to use the floor like in our old place. <laughs> yeah. And then we're just going to give that a really healthy shake. If you want to get the cilantro and the ice and everything dissolved. Nope, that's not too loud. Oh, LinkedIn user is Tiffany. Yes. Hi, Tiffany. May have sweet ice. Sweet corn ice. ice in Maryland. Okay, I have to I have to find some in Texas now. Yeah. Corn and ice cream are like too much everything. That is Along true. with strawberries. 
and other fresh produce and, and chocolate and roller skating and roller skating no food was no food was and peaches. pasta and pizza and peaches <laughs> pasta oh my gosh you're you're a Italy class today that oh. pizza oh we'll talk about that later yeah wow but damn Italy class was amazing yes it was <laughs> All right, and then finally, we're going to double strain. So we have the Hawthorne strainer and uh, just a mesh strainer because there's a lot of chunks in here. We're just going to pour it over, and we get this really cool, creamy, tasty margarita. See that double strainer? Nice. Definitely yeah. helped because you can see all these little chunks of cilantro and corn that it picked up cilantro. it would not be very appetizing mm -hmm. in your cocktail last but certainly not least we're going to put our garnish in here let's find some good pieces and yeah, make it look effect. pretty all right come on there you go guys let's find us some good cilantro or our corn, corn ice cream. Volta's mind is blown. Sweet corn ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> it's cilantro is so wilty. It's fine. But I want it to be beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay. Just let me try it. There we go. Well, no, don't you want the lime? No, sure. we want a lime. Um, slice. Lime slice. So not on the edge, like inside it. Yeah. Okay. Half of it. Like half of it. Like this. Like inside. This. Like this, thusly. Thusly, thusly yeah. Nice stuff. Okay, there we go, thusly. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh. This is really good. <laughs> you looked. You looked confused. I thought I messed something up for a second. No, the cilantro is coming in strong, but I think because it's right there. Yeah. So if you're not a fan of cilantro, you can mm. definitely yeah. uh, not include it. But if you are a fan, this is awesome. I did want to add one extra thing because I feel like there's enough going on in it that it could stand up to a float of Grand Marnier. And normally in a to get an orange element in a margarita, you would use Cointreau. Mm. But Grand Marnier... Wait, is that is Grand Marnier the almond one? That's yeah, the orange one. Orange. It's very, it's a orangey sweet liqueur. So whereas Grand Marnier is kind of, or Cointreau is kind of subtle and delicate, mm -hmm. it would get lost in here. Grand Marnier is stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there we go. How's Ooh. that? That is good. Oh, uh, yeah. This is awesome. It's I love that it's not a sweet drink at all. It's very, it's almost like on the savory side, but not yeah. really. It's kind of like, I don't know, like a Bloody Mary, right? It's not a sweet cocktail, yeah. but also isn't. It's like just such a nice balance. Yeah, you could, you could go either way. You could make it sweeter if you mm -hmm. added a little more honey or maybe some agave syrup. Uh, or you could go a little more savory if you toned down the sweetness and maybe added a little uh, like a chili powder. Or Ooh. some sort of seasoning mm. blend to it. Paprika. Paprika. A little paprika. smoked, smoked paprika. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, Nabila said you could make your own boozy sweet corn ice cream sorbet. I mm. love that idea. Yeah. We'll have to look up some recipes, YouTube videos, watch them. <laughs> yeah. Now I need to this figure out so a, a, a booze avo avo avocado. Avocado. Av avocado. 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 Al Alpha. Alpha. Alfogato? Alpha, 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 alpha gato? The, the espresso one I Yeah, alfogato. Alfogato. Yeah, not avocado. <laughs> alfogato. Anyway. Alfocado. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't mix. No? I was like, don't mix avocado with ice cream, but there is, there is an there's avocado, avocado ice, ice cream. cream. Curious to try it. Oh, this is tasty. Oh, uh, a few more. Of these Pat things. said, "I skipped ahead. Mine doesn't look as pretty though, or have corn." Oh, <laughs> uh, Pat, you gotta get you some corn. Uh, Pat just made a margarita, <laughs> or maybe just a glass of tequila. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Keeping it simple. Well, yeah, man. I mean, you do you. It's, it's your taste. Yeah, that's well, very true. There's no, there's no gatekeeping here. Oh, uh, he said avocado ice cream is pretty decent. Okay, pretty I decent. Have to, 
I have to make a, a tasting of all these uh, ice creams mm. that are like from from produce things. Oh, can you switch the camera? I just yes. like went off. You just wandered off just while wandered talking. Off. <laughs> all right, so now it's painting time. All right, all right. Cam, Mike, yeah, I know. I know how to do it now. I go to this camera. Yeah. I go to that camera. I don't turn on the FaceTime camera. Hi. No. I pressed the wrong one. Okay, there. this one. My fingers are cold oh. from, from, uh, from, from taking that cocktail. And then this one down. No, turn the top down. This other one right now. Let's see. Okay, so we're gonna we're trying to fix this shadow behind the situation. Scenes, shadow gone now. Yeah, for the most part, it's it's better. You yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Oh, oh, would you look at that? My <laughs> my book is on the table. Oh no. <laughs> um. Guys, I have written a book in case you're somehow not aware. In case you're not aware, uh, it arrived to the warehouse. To so I'm really excited. Um, it's gonna start shipping out to people soon. But it's um, it's a book on how to paint watercolor foods. Um, yeah. So, uh, but to, today we'll be painting this cocktail that we just made, and the glass shape is gonna be a little bit different than the one we have because we didn't have we didn't have this particular glass but i wanted to, i wanted to paint i wanted to paint something a little different yeah because like it's boring you know like doing one of those just standard glasses yeah we're not we're not basic <laughs> yeah dan are you going to join us in our watercolor we'll give it a shot. all right here you go here's some paper i got Get you a pencil. I'll, Oops. I'll make you a. I'll make you another cocktail. Oh, did you already drink that one? I'm a, I'm a good bit of it. <laughs> this thing's tasty. Yeah. Oh, hi, Gabe. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, Pat. Thank you. Um, he says, "Yay, the book." <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll start sketching our cocktail. Uh, the first. Um, the first thing I'm going to start with, I'm going to do like the sides of this glass and kind of actually the easiest way to sketch out this particular shape is if you pretend to start sketching like a um, raindrop, for example. So I'm just going to start with that shape and then I'm going to erase it. So I'm just doing like kind of like a little raindrop. So I have that uh, rounded curve at the bottom, uh, but then I'm just gonna extend these lines a little bit like this. And then I'm going to connect, connect these two lines with a slightly curved line here to show the top of the glass. And let's see. I'm gonna erase these extra extra pencil marks. I just drew lines until one of them was kind of in the shape I wanted and then erase the rest. That works too, Dan. This is just on the, like a simple trick. If you kind of are trying to sketch out a shape, you can see like what what does the shape represent or like what does it look like and something as simple as like a raindrop can kind of get you started um instead of you know feeling like oh it's an intimidating glass because it's i don't know has this weird and if you want to just paint a raindrop you're already there exactly you're already there all right so i have this shape and then i'm going to add just like a little tiny base of the glass here, and that's just gonna be like a slightly curved line. I'm actually gonna extend or like widen this, this curve at the bottom just a little bit more. All right, for the most part, it looks like the shape of the glass that I'm going for. Um, then going to sketch another uh, slightly curved line to show the content contents of the beverage so the margarita and then 
I'm gonna do kind of like a half half oval type of shape, type of curve for the lime slice like this. And then a straight line that connects these two. And then let's see, uh, for the cilantro, so that's gonna be a little tricky because it's the cilantro leaves are, they're really jaggedy. Can you can you pass me the garnish from the drink? I just wanna use that for. So if you guys take a look, like the cilantro um, has like a lot of little wavy lines, but it's essentially uh, like one of these little guys has like three little leaves that are connected, and then it's just a bunch of like wavy jaggedy lines at at the top or around the edges. So we're gonna. Can I go oh, how did you paint so much of that so fast? What I'm I'm just sketching. You're what do you like mean? Flying through this oh. thing. Okay. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> even, I'm not even like done erasing my raindrop. Oh no, you're still on the raindrop? No, yeah. no worries, Dan. You take your time. <laughs> Speedy. Speedy. I'm like once I get in the zone, I'm like on a mission, like. This is gonna get taught, <laughs> yeah. but I, I I will slow down. Yeah. Do you want me to? <laughs> Do you want me to repeat any of the steps? No, I got it. I just wanted to, to take a beat so that uh, so that I can catch up. Yeah. Make a little banter. Make a little banter. A little banter. So what do I do on the top? Banter. So I'm draw a circle, a little oval yeah. on the top. A little oval. Uh, did you do the the lime slice? No, like, I haven't gotten to that yet. I just he's so just floating around in there. Yeah, just floating around. This little guy just floating. Like willy nilly. All right, so like like a little little sliver, like a half circle. Yeah, half more like a half an oval, I would say. Half oval. Yeah, and then you have a half half a shape, and then you straight line that connects these two. All right, I'm and, back. And then for the cilantro, like. We're just going to kind of do a couple of these little, so see like Dan, this leaf has like three little leaves essentially that are connected. And then there's a bunch of like jaggedy edges all around. So kind of like give it an approximation. Jaggedy. Jaggedy. And then you can do one on the side here, also like a bunch of little wavy lines. We're just basically like giving the impression that this is a cilantro um, sprig. Yeah. <laughs> Pat said, I want the director's cut where we get to have the alternate camera view so we can watch Dan. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's pretty much me drinking and getting <laughs> frustrated over erasing lines. <laughs> but you've learned so much since you started painting along with me, Dan. That is true. I, I think you, is hard. I think you've improved. Oh no, I need to, oh, okay. I think I have enough water in these brush pens. But you might need to fill them I, up. I usually need less water than more, so that's yes, that's true. All right, are you ready to? Are you ready to paint, Dan? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna switch it up today. Oh my God, can you believe it? My light source is from the right hand side. What? Consider me switched. Yes. Switched. So uh, I'm actually gonna mix in a little bit of yellow here on the palette, and I'm gonna dilute it with a ton of water so that it's very light in value. So the way watercolor works, the water you add, the lighter it will appear on your paper. And I'm just gonna grab some of this color in yellow and just start painting the contents of the glass. So this, this particular um, watercolor sketch is gonna look, you know, it's not gonna be as vibrant because the cocktail was very much like light in colors, like a yellowy green. But for for this, we'll just keep it yellow. 
So I'm just kind of painting on dry paper directly, adding, adding the color. And then I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to lift off just a little bit of the paint on the right hand side because that's where my light source is coming from. And you could also uh, kind of drop in a little bit more color if you're seeing that it's, it's a little bit too light. I'm mostly, do, I'm mostly adding a lot more yellow so that it shows up better on camera because um, yellow is such a light color anyway. All right, so you can see here I have a little highlight lifted off that color. And then I'm going to let this dry and let's see. While this is drying, I'm going to paint the cilantro with the green. I'm just going to grab some green here in my palette. I'm just mixing. I have a couple of different darker and lighter greens and I'm just mixing them together to get kind of like a nice green here. And then, let's see, I'm going to start painting the cilantro. And again, I am painting on dry paper. So sometimes you'll see me do like add a little bit of water and then drop in the color. Uh, but in this case, because the area is pretty small, I would recommend doing it on dry because otherwise it's just harder to control. Uh, how the paint, like how it goes on the paper, but this way we have we have more control. All right, so uh, now painting my cilantro, but I want to add a little bit more, like some some specks of darker green, so that it doesn't look so like a flat flat color. So it looks a little bit more interesting more artsy. All right. Okay, and then I'm going to use some of this green too to make a little outline for the lime. Uh, I guess it's a slice, right? Not a wedge. It's a slice. It's a wedge. It's a wedge. And then I'm going to uh, dilute the screen with a little bit of water so that it's lighter in value again. And I'm going to use that to like add little tiny lines, like just little brush marks to represent um, the flesh of the lime slice slash wedge. Just a couple little guys here and there. All right, and let's see, I'm going to lift off my highlight kind of disappeared. So I'm just going to reinforce it, clean off the brush, lift it, remove this color. All right. Uh, let's see, and then I'm going to use a little bit of Payne's Gray. right here and I'm going to use that to to add a couple of these like outlines on the glass and also at the top here just outlining all right and so I, I didn't paint this um, this little sprig of cilantro inside of the glass because this area is still is still not dried. Uh, but once it dries, you know I, I'm gonna add it in. Otherwise, it will just like um, kind of bleed into the the rest of the glass, and I just want to keep it more contained. And let's see, the last thing we could do is add a little cast shadow. Um, again, I'm gonna use some. Paints gray, and I'm just gonna do kind of like a thin, thin line right underneath the glass, but it's gonna come off more to the left hand side because our light source is coming from this direction 
and it's like casting a little shadow. So then I'm gonna clean off the brush and now I want to soften these lines so that it looks like a soft shadow right underneath this, this glass. Which one are you using? Oh, right here, yeah, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Got it. The really watery one? Yeah. Watery. Watery. And then after your cilantro leaves have dried, you can also go back in with a little bit of green and kind of like add a little tiny, uh, like those little wavy lines that you can see on the sprig. Just a couple of like extra details just to give it a little bit more dimension. And see, I'm going to outline the lime wedge a little bit. A little bit more so it stands out. And yeah, I think we're done. What about you, Dan? How's it going? Uh, actually not that bad this time. Did the corn margarita help you? Or all those corny jokes? Well, the corny jokes definitely would benefit, <laughs> but uh, actually listening to you, your advice from the last one where you said that you're supposed to paint with the side of the brush. Oh, too. yeah. That was helpful. Yeah. So I wanted, I wanted to give a shout out to Nabila um, because mm -hmm. she, she actually gave us the idea of using corny jokes, yeah, <laughs> which um, I, I clear, didn't get the first one, but you know, there were some well, good ones. That was even better, a good corny joke. Is... Oh, look at that. I see you switched it up. I, you, mean, you... I, I didn't listen. I, didn't <laughs> I love it. No, it's awesome. I am very, I'm very impressed that you used, finally, I feel like you used the mm -hmm right amount of watercolor where I can see it. So great job. And I love the little details on um, on the cilantro. Like guys, if you take a look, it's like two different styles, but I, I love this one because it's like more of a sketchy type of style, just like some color, a little like lines here. Yeah, so I'm more of a drawer than a painter. Yeah, uh, but I, I love it because it's like you can, Really, if you are just a drawer, you can add a, a bit of color here and there and like become a uh, little painter. Little, little painter, a lot of drawer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, nicely done, Dan. Oh boy, my heart is full now. Oh. No, there were no notes. No notes. Pat said, not too shabby, Dan. Yay, all, right. <laughs> all right, props from both the artists. Yeah, all right, let me switch out the camera. Mm. Um, it's crazy. I know how right. much alcohol was in this drink. It does yeah. not taste like it at all. Yeah. Had this whole thing. It was like <laughs> there's two two ounces of tequila. I would like one. I will make you one. Okay. I, make, I, I think I'll be making a lot of corn margaritas tonight. <laughs> Oh, uh, look, Nabila said, oh, wow, the cast shadows also sits under the cilantro sprigs. Love Dan's version. Ooh, so unique. Oh, oh look at so you. Look at that. I'm getting compliments oh. all around. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And Nabila, especially, I feel like it's, I think it's 2 a.m. Um, oh, my goodness. It's, that's crazy. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Right? Same time, same place. Mm, salty. Salty. <laughs> can't wait to have one of these. Tasty. <laughs> yes, you can't wait to have one. Yeah. I can't wait to have another. All right. <laughs> uh, thank you, Patricia, for joining yeah. us. Bye. Have a great rest of your week, you guys. Oh, looks, like, looks like Patricia got internet. <laughs> now I need um, corn, sweet corn ice cream. Sweet corn ice cream. Oh, my God. Lots of corn.